Hi everybody and welcome to my 3D printing corner. Today I want to go over part one of my review on the Pico Hybrid Hot End. I've been running it on a Bowden setup, so let's take a look. Oh, hold on, I'll be right back. Okay, we're we're good to go. I I I found it. Found some other stuff down there too, but that happens in a 3D shop. Okay, so here we've got the heat break, nice and tiny. Here's the V6 heat break, so you can see the see the size difference. So this, when it's all put together, is only 51 millimeters in length and weighs around 28 grams with its cooling fan and, and wires. One of the nice things, here's the nozzle. And the nozzle, when it screws in, it, it's so small you guys can't even, my hands are in the way. So the nozzle goes way up into the into the heat sink itself and you can see how it's been designed with the heat break and it's got these extra uh, ribs on it and so on the on the production unit there's actually some holes in there to help further cool the the, the heat break slash nozzle so because this is so long and where the melt zone is on this you do not get any leaks and the PTFE lined nozzle is in the Ender 3 here, and same thing, you've got the melt zone on the nozzle, then the PTFE runs down to just above where the melt zone is, so even though it is a PTFE nozzle, the PTFE is, is out of the high heat area. Saying that though, even though it is a PTFE, you don't want to push it past 235C, 240C. So when you switch to PETG, you're going to switch to the all-metal nozzle. It's really easy to change. You can actually do it cold. You can uh, unscrew it and then um, screw it back in. If you do have a little bit of buildup on there, a little bit of clag, you can pop up the temperature a little bit to 100C and, and it comes out a little, little bit easier. So that's one of the one of the pros. You've got the non-leaking nozzle design. It's lightweight, uh, easy to mount. There is a V6 adapter. This isn't it, but there's a V6 adapter that makes this the same length as a normal V6. So that makes it easier to mount into into different printers. On this right now, what I've done is I've I've created my own mount, and this will go up on Thingiverse or or um, they'll Metaform will include it. Okay, so what I did is I created a little mount. I've got a coupler on top, nice Bowden coupler that uh, allows me to feed the the uh, PTFE all, all the way through. I put an M6 heat cert in there that allowed me to screw the heat sink in place. And then on the Creality setup, you've got these press fit, uh, I don't know what they're actually called. Uh, they've got the threads, so I just made it to where it snaps in. Maybe, maybe snaps into place. Then I mounted the, uh, the stock Creality fan off to the side. So not spend too much time on that, but there's, there's a lot of different ways you can mount it. Uh, it does have the ability to run a fairly wide range of speeds. Uh, I've gone up to 200 millimeters a second with, without any issues. And with the, with the larger nozzles, I'm sure it would go even higher. Um, this one right here, I'm running a pretty, pretty pedestrian, about 60 millimeters a second. And... This is the, the Mother's Day print that's on Thingiverse. And so far, no stringing on coming off of it. And that's one thing I did have to adjust for. 
and that, that's on the con section, is the longer melt zone, some of the, the PLA filaments were stringing worse than others. A uh, little bit better than what you would find on the volcano, but worse than what you get on a, on a V6 or a mosquito. So on slicer settings, I am using Simplify 3D and the Prusa Slicer Alpha. And I'm using the profile settings that were included with that. Haven't made any changes to that. The only thing I did is I did go into the, the machine and adjust the jerk up to uh, 6, I think it was. And that helped me get around some of the ooze and, and the... So you can see here all the prints that I've been printing. Put quite a, quite a few hours, uh, roughly 200 hours just in PLA. You can see I've got my benching armada back here. I uh, printed this castle. This was, I think, an 18-hour print because it didn't need a lot of infill. We've got the, uh, the baby. This was a 24-hour print. This was uh, a little bit higher resolution. And so I'll show you that in detail on my uh, high-tech device, my turntable. Eventually I'm going to motorize this, but for now we're just going to hand spin it. My kids did grab some things and they were painting happily away, so I've got more, but they were, I mean, literally grabbing. They probably painted 20 objects already. So back to some more of the cons. The biggest thing I'm, I'm struggling with is the stock extruder on this machine is the is the old plastic extruder and with a little bit longer retraction I was playing with in, in the slicers I noticed it was flattening the filament out enough to when it was going through the stock PTFE tube it would just get more resistance and eventually that would cause another grind through so not a fault of the of the hot end uh, just something goofy on, on this plastic extruder and I'm gonna go ahead and swap that out I'm gonna put a BMG on it Capricorn tubing and then try try again and um, see if I get the get the same results but I, I think it's got to deal with this hugely overpowered spring on, and uh, the way the plastic is, is flexing on there as well. Um, I did have a failure on the hot end and you can see right here we've got the uh, there's a spring on the thermistor and I was running that really tight to where it was bending right where it comes out and as this was twisting back and forth it was it was able to short out the thermistor and so I let the Metaform guys know and they sent me one of the updated thermistors and I, I haven't had any issues with that and so I'm sending them back the other thermistor so they can play with it uh, but this new thermistor it's, it's got some different wiring it's got better uh, sheeting on the inside so they were uh, already on top of the, the issue from some of the early, uh, early pre-production pre beta units. The parts cooling fan, I'm calling this a con just because it's a different pitch than what you're used to. It, it's still quiet. So I don't know if you can, you can hear it. I've got another printer running. So let me stop the uh, parts cooling fan. So, I mean, basically it's the same pitch as what you get off the, uh, the, the steppers. If you have a really silent printer, uh, like the Craftbot 3 that I've got running over there, you're going to notice that higher pitch uh, cooling fan. But, you know, not annoying, it's just different. Uh, if you don't have this uh, silicon sock, and going back to pros, the silicon sock is, is quite nice. You know, after... 200 hours I'm not seeing any any weakening of the sock like you see on some of the, the V6 heat socks where they start to get brittle and 
and will crumble away and sometimes even get in your print. I've taken this on and off quite a bit, no issues. Uh, if you're not running the silicon heat sock, going back to the con list, if your parts cooling fan is blowing directly on the heater block, you will see some fluctuations in in the temperature. So make sure to, to PID tune with, with your fan on if if your parts cooling is, is not ideal. And Metaform is, is working on some different parts cooling. They actually have an integrated, uh, they didn't, didn't send it. So their integrated has the, the heat break cooling and also a parts cooling fan. And they showed me some of the prints coming off that and it, it was, they looked pretty good. So hopefully they'll send me one of those so I can play with that as well. As far as materials, I've run a wide range of brands of PLA. I've got some old Robo PLA that with my horrible cooling, I mean my horrible lighting, you can't really see how well this came out. So that's some old Robo. And this was not even dried and I don't even have strain. So this was a Prusament PETG and I'll show you that on the uh, the high-tech uh, spinning device. What do, we, what do we call those? So here was a failure, and this was caused by the, the grind through on the uh, extruder. And so, did have a few of those. Here's a Prusament uh, PETG in base mode. And here's another face mode. This is PLA. So even though I'm uh, using the stock profiles, I'm still getting really good quality prints. And I, I have done some some back-to-back -back testing. I've put the the Prusa back on. I'm sorry, guys. Not the Prusa extruder, but the uh, the Creality extruder. And so I've run run benches back to back. And they, they look pretty much identical. Um, so anyway, let me show you some of the prints on the, uh, the high-tech uh, turntable. So this is the baby. Apparently don't call him Baby Yoda. And this is a Silk PLA. And this was a Prusa slicer with the automatic layer height on it. So you can see, you can see some in here where it's automatically changing the layer height. We do have some stringing, got some stringing on the ears here. And this was uh, the Prusa Slicer Alpha Creality settings. So most of this was at a layer height of 0.12. In a little bit of stringing, and I was I was fighting that. I wasn't getting along with the Creality extruder very well. So this is a fun model, and it's actually a multicolor print. So if you've got an MMU or a palette, you can do some stunning things with this model. Okay. So in closing, we've got a solid performing hot end that is incredibly tiny, allowing you to reduce the weight that you have on your on your gantry and take advantage of that. If you, especially if you have um, a delta printer, for example, um, I've thrown a lot of different brands of material at it. Uh, across PETG, PLA, I've probably thrown five, six different brands, and PETG I've tried a couple different brands. Haven't had any clogs, haven't had the need to adjust my temperatures from what I would normally run them at. Thanks again for watching my video. I will post uh, some links to some earlier videos 
one where I show off the hot end in, in greater detail. As I work on things, I've got a new camera coming. I do have a new printer to play with. Got some old printers to play with that I'll, I'll be putting up. Still working on the shop lighting because this thing is not that bright. So anyway, happy printing. Any questions, please ask in the comments, and I will get the Metaform guys to chime in as well.